we will do actual SAT questions for writing today. But as usual, we will start with a math question. So get your maths ready and let's jump into it. Okay, um, before we do this, please, again, we're gonna review this. This is extremely, extremely important. The way we do this is we follow this approach. You write out the type of the question, if it's a second part question, you highlight important information, you write down the values and equations with their units, you write the ask, very clearly, you write the ask, you read through the options, keep going, A, B, C, D, and then you think of different approaches. Eliminate first, then plug and chug different values into the variables, then narrow down MCQ, only then you wanna use your calculator, and then you wanna use algebra. And once you've gotten the answer, then you check the answer against your ask, okay? So can I have a volunteer again today to please uh, read the question with me? Shiv, let's do it, All right. Thank you, Shiv. Shiv, I think you may be on mute. Um, yeah, my bad. My laptop's just really laggy. Okay. okay so, um, at a restaurant, uh, N cups of tea are made by adding tea, tea bags to hot water. Okay. If what do you, wait, what do you highlight? So we reached a, um, reached a punctuation. Okay. So what do we highlight there? So uh, N cups of tea. N cups of tea. So we have N, N cups of tea. Okay, number. Yeah. I'd underline by. Buy, okay, yep. Uh, T, T bags. T, T bags, so T is number T bags. So here we're doing the units portion, yep. Yeah. Okay. Then I'd highlight the expression T equals N plus two. T equals N plus two. Then uh, I'd highlight the, um, how many additional bags. Yep, how many additional T bags, yep. Uh, each additional cup of tea. To make each additional cup of tea. Perfect. Okay, so what have we done? We uh, write the type of question. This is not a second part. We highlight inform important information. We did this. Uh, what's the ask? Let's write out the ask. Um, the ask is the, um, uh, is, is how many tea bags for one more, more cup of tea. Okay, so number tea bags um, for each new teacup, right? Okay, Yeah. what's the next step? Read through the options. What do we have in the options? So um, we have like all integer values. Yep. So okay. zero, one, two, and three. Yep. And they're all in ascending order with like with the, with the difference of one. Perfect, okay. So ascending. Yep. And difference is one. And what else do we notice? Is there anything else that we notice here? Strangely enough, it's um, spelled out in letters. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. That's true. Like, yeah. the, which tells me that it's not like a super like crazy math question, which asks for like um, super complicated yeah, maybe. calculations. And stuff. It seems maybe. like more of a thing, which is like testing like the basic concept and understanding or your ability yeah. to transform like English into math or math into English, I guess. Yep. And I think the only other thing is that two matches this two here. I think that's the only other thing that jumps out, maybe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, let's see, have we done everything else? Okay, now I want you to follow this approach, please. Uh, follow this approach while you solve the question. So I will give you one minute to solve this question. Right, half of you have it so far.
Another 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Awesome. Okay. Um, so hopefully, if you've already solved the question, you already started looking for other methods to do this. So we're going to go over other methods. Um, I was when I was doing this actually yesterday, I got it wrong. This is a kind of a tricky question, so um, it's fun to review together. So what are they looking for? The, the ask is how many additional tea bags are needed to make each additional cup of tea. So one method to do this is word to equation. And so in this, in this case, what this essentially means is gradient. And so in t, um, t equals n plus two, the gradient is one. So therefore b is the right answer. The other way we can do this is plug and chug. So can someone, uh, can anyone think of what are we plugging and chugging? And if you can just write it in chat. This one's a little, this one's a little tricky, but what can we possibly plug and chug to try and get the answer? Okay, so what do, what do we mean, um, what do we mean by number of cups? There we go, okay, perfect, yes, um, perfect. So you guys are getting it. So first we plug in, um, n equals, let's say one, and then we plug in n equals two. Therefore, when n equals one, t equals three, and here t equals four. So for each additional one, there is one more t bag. And then when you go through this process, we'll realize, well, okay, that's the same thing as gradient. And so the, one, no, the method one just falls out of it. And um, there was, Naman, what was the third approach again? I forgot. <laughs> Just to eliminate and ah, Yes, yes, okay. Thank you. So the first, we want to, I forgot this step, eliminate MCQ. Um, when you look at this, you should be able to eliminate three and you should be able to eliminate none um, because if you're adding a tea bag, a cup, then you have to add more tea bags and then you choose between one and two. Um, so you start with elimination. All right, so please, please take away please learn this approach and please do this approach for each one. Cool. All right. So I want to show you something interesting. So I was doing some Google searching and this is what I found. So apparently on TikTok, there are people that teach SAT on TikTok. So let's, let's take a look at a couple, like at two videos uh, that I found pretty funny. So let me just also share audio. There we go. Okay, this is hilarious. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me do this again. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, T Swift, look, I love you and I respect and love the message of the song, but you're getting your grammar completely wrong. You're using the wrong verb mood. You see, you're using if I was, which is in the indicative verb mood, instead of if I were, which is in the subjunctive. You use if I was for things that have happened. So I would say if I was eight years old, but you use the subjunctive if I were for things that haven't happened. So I would say if I were 80 years old, it's why Beyonce says if I were a boy and Justin Bieber actually gets it wrong when he says if I was your boyfriend, unless he actually was your boyfriend at one point. Look, do your thing T-Swift, but get your grammar right, please. Oh, this is hilarious. All right, and then one from yesterday's material. How about this? Blank, eating all the hot tamales. There versus there versus there. Oop, oop, it's there, as in they are, because there has the word here in it, so it's for locations, and there has the word air in it, like someone who inherits something and then they own it. So it's possessive. Well done, Jolene. <laughs> How about this? Blank. Eating all the hot tamales. All right, all right. There. Why does why does it replay? I don't understand. Oh, TikTok. 
<laughs> okay, cool. So hopefully you won't forget these rules anymore uh, now that you've seen those two videos. So uh, on the back of this, can you guys tell me what social media platform do you check, uh, do you use the most often? Which social media platform do you use most frequently? Um, you didn't include Reddit. Oh, interesting. Okay, good to, good to know. I will include Reddit next time. Right, all right. Okay, so Instagram at 63%, TikTok at 10%. Okay, Snapchat at 20%. That's interesting. I wouldn't have guessed. Uh, LinkedIn, two people use LinkedIn most frequently. That's a little early, but great. Nobody uses, okay, Facebook is literally zero. What is this, you guys? When I was when I was in high school, Facebook was like the thing. How is how is this zero? That fascinates me. Okay, I'm old school, I guess. Uh, <laughs> all right, great, great, um, cool. So today we have a big English day. So let's get started with English. Now, the past three days we've been going over a lot of English rules, and I sent you those rules through email. So please look at those links and please make the rule uh, pure notes yourself. I'm being very evil. I'm sorry, I'm not sending you the PowerPoint. I'm very sorry, but trust me, this is in your best benefit. I'm not a jerk. I'm actually trying to help you out. Uh, make the rules yourself. So usually I would not want to do, go over the rules, but we dedicated three days. Consider yourself lucky that we did that um, because I want to do the self-teach method. So today is actually where SAT writing starts. Today, properly, we're gonna start the way I would study for SAT writing. So. Um, if you didn't come here for the past three days, that's perfectly fine. You will pick it all up and this is, uh, this is it. So let's get started. We will go over paper one, Khan Academy paper one, and we will do um, questions one by one and, and you guys will see what's happen what happens. Let's jump into it. <clears throat> this will be very, um, very fruitful for everybody. I'm quite excited actually. Okay, so um, remember the rules. One thing I want to say is try and cross out uh, different options first before you select the right answer. And if you cross it out, select why. What's the cause? What is, what is incorrect? So let's get started with the pollings. All right. Let's go. Oh, sorry, let me show you what's above also. Sorry about that. All right, 20 more seconds. All right, three, two, one. Okay, so um, most of you are getting this. So what I've done is this, uh, we're gonna do the question here, but we are also going to then review it in another format. Um, we are going to review it like, like so. So this is Khan Academy, paper one, section two, question one. That's the, that's the approach, okay? If, if anytime you find this wrong, just let me know and I'll correct it on the screen. Okay, so, in this sentence, what is happening, uh, this is A, B, C, D, right? They're asking us to compare the advantages of Greek yogurt, our do the potential drawbacks. They're making a comparison between the advantages and the potential drawbacks. And the question is, do these advantages versus potential drawbacks, which word to use? And so our to do um, suggests that the advantages are doing something, but these things don't do anything, right? There's no action being performed by advantages, so that's why you cannot outdo. Again, the advantages and the potential drawbacks, are they defeating? Well, they're not really fighting, so they can't really defeat uh, because they're not doing anything again. So same thing, defeat is incorrect. And then here, the advantages outperform potential drawbacks. Again, 
Are the advantages really performing? They're not really performing, so this is not it. Uh, but the advantages outweigh the potential drawbacks. Uh, this is correct because they don't have to do anything. It's just when you compare them, right, then one outweighs the other. So therefore, uh, this is correct. Okay, what I would like to ask everybody is um, if, if this does not make sense, if you have any question, please ask. Because when you ask that question, that's when we're all going to learn. So does anybody have a question on this, on why we crossed out A, B, or C? All right, no. So if you have any question, just, um, just raise your hand, and then we will, we will come to you. OK, uh, let's do question three. Question three. Nice, good correction, Shiv. So I would be, so for just today, we're gonna leave, we're gonna try and leave intuition aside. We're going to try and do this paper using grammar rules. So we've done three before, um, but we're gonna do it again. And this time I want you to think, the question I want you to think is why do we cross out the other options? Finding the correct answer, like remember in mathematics, finding the correct answer is one part, but can you think of why, which grammar rule is being broken, why, can, why do we cross out the other options? Okay, another four seconds, four, three, two, one, and pull. Okay, all right, so we've done this one before, but uh, let's go back to, um, so I, I want to stress one thing, when you're practicing, always practice on this kind of screen. Um, I'm just using this other worksheet here um, because I can annotate much clearly all the different options. Okay, so, not, is this, is it this? Yeah, so look, I've already made a mistake. This is supposed to be Q3. Okay, so what are they saying? Us uh, no, this is question two, question three is below this. This is question two. Oh, this is question two? Okay, is it this one? Oh yeah, there we go. Question three is can pollute. Yes, okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so in this one, um, if you just read through the options, you will notice an apostrophe S, an apostrophe S, and then you will notice can, can, could have, and has, okay? So we're working with uh, apostrophe S dilemma, and then we're working with tenses, right? So if it is improperly introduced into the environment, acid way runoff can pollute waterways. So the first question is, is it apostrophe S or not S? Well, if you say acid way runoff can, produce, can pollute waterways, it suggests that something belongs to the waterways, whereas in the sentence, nothing belongs. So this uh, is making a um, S dilemma error. Or actually it's making a logical error because nothing belongs. So we cross out both of these. Okay. Um, and then if you look at the tense between can and could have, the tense for the sentence is if it is. The tense of the sentence is it is. So if it is, then it can. But if it is, you cannot put it is and could have uh, in the same one. Therefore, the correct answer is this one. And this is making a tense error. Okay, so we cross out, let's use X's here. We cross out this one. All right, again, any questions? Please raise your hand now. Only if you disagree with some of this and you have questions, only then will, um, will there be learning. All right, let's go back to the, to the next one. Three, let's do four. We are now doing four. Okay. Nice. 
Nice. These results are making me happy. All right, another 10 seconds. All right, and pull. Okay, let's go here. Question four. All right, okay, we, we did these rules. You guys should be really good at these rules now. So what can you type into, um, into chat? What error is number a making what's the error in a in a what's the error here there are many many errors in a so there you go semicolon error perfect what's the rule for semicolon the rule for semicolon is is clauses on either side have to be independent this is not independent clause Right? Food scientist is not an independent clause. And if you start a sentence with and, that's not an independent clause. So this, this cannot be the correct answer. What is the other error this is making? Well, this is combining a uh, comma with a semicolon. You cannot do that. Commas go with commas, semicolons go with semicolons. Um, I guess it's also making the and error, actually, right? I guess technically it's making the and error because I don't even know. This is just is just is just making an error. You know, no, none of you put a. Perfect. Okay. What is the error in B? Can you type into chat? What is the error in B? Yep, it's a colon error. And can you type out a little bit more? Why is it a colon error? What is the rule that it's breaking? Awesome. Okay. Both are true. The clause before a colon has to be deep, uh, it has to be independent. Food scientist is not an independent clause. Neither is yogurt manufacturers or food scientists. So again, not independent. If you've been here for the past three classes, I want you to focus on this. When you see this, the first thing you should do is look for this. Don't put your logic, like your uh, intuition aside just a little for this exercise and just work with the rules. Second thing is a uh, colon should introduce a list or example, and again, not a list, not an example, therefore we can cross this out, okay? Um, yogurt menu, so number C, we have a comma, goes with a comma, the and comes with a comma, is C correct? What, um, what do we call this? Can you type in the chat again? What do we call the underlying portion here? Oh, actually, yeah, no, you're right. Sorry, it's it was not it's not non-essential, right? Or yogurt manufacturers? Yeah, actually, it is non-essential because you could say yogurt manufacturers and government officials, so that that works. Um, but I but not really. It's it's more of a list, right? These one of the first item, second item, third item in a list. So list are separated by comma, and this is the Oxford comma. Perfect for the person that wrote this. This is correct. What error does um, what error does D make? What is the error here? Yeah, parallel, whoever put parallel structure, that's a good one, actually. Um, the comma after the and, basically, this is the error. We haven't really done a rule specifically for this one, um, but parallel structure in the list, it makes sense. Um, but the, the comma should go before the and, not after the end. So this is incorrect. Therefore, this is incorrect. All right. Um, whoa, what happened? Okay. Okay. Quick poll before we keep going. Uh, does, does this process make sense? Or actually, no, let me change the question. Do you understand why this process will help you learn the rules? Do you understand why this process will help you learn the rules? Okay, perfect, yes. 
98% of you understand. Thank you. Um, this is very, very crucial. And actually, when you are practicing, you don't really need me here. What I would recommend you to do is on your own, if you go to Khan Academy, Khan Academy gives you an explanation for each question and why it's wrong. And then you will notice here, it describes very clearly. So let's do question three we just did, right? Uh, no, we did question four just now. Um, it describes very clearly what the error is, punctuation error, punctuation error, um, and then punctuation error, and it adds an unnecessary comma after and. Here, inappropriately uses a colon, separate items in a list. Notice that what comes before the colon isn't an independent clause. So all of the description is given you here. You don't really need me for this. This can be, I would recommend, the process I'm trying to teach you is for you to get these answers and then do it yourself for each question, figure out the error and then check against the answer on Khan Academy. And by the way, it's these things that I use to create our notes. So um, all of these, I collected, uh, Naman and I collected all of these from Khan Academy Solutions and that's how we made the list of errors to study. So this is a very um, good approach. All right, let's do number five. No, not five, let's do, not six, let's do seven. Seven, please. I will launch a poll now. All right, another 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, can you write down in chat, what kind, what is this question testing? <laughs> nice, Arushi is so fast. I didn't even finish the question. <laughs> she had it ready. Uh, you, guys, you guys know what I'm gonna say now. This is unfair. You don't need me. Yes, this is an idiom. This is just an idiom. Uh, the idiom is, what does serves go with? It's always serves as. Therefore, B is the right answer. Serves to B is not the correct idiom. Um, that's, just, that's just the rule. So if you got this wrong, please open up your pure notes, put idiom, enter, indent your list, and write down serves as as an item for you to learn. So please add this to your pure notes. Uh, let's keep going with number eight. Oh, let me relaunch, sorry. Let me relaunch the poll, yeah, thank you. You guys are getting it, nice, I love it. I love it, I love it. Okay, 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one and pull. Okay, uh, let's go into our worksheet. This is number, which one is this? There we go, okay. Uh, can you type in to chat, what is this testing? What was this question testing? Parallel structure, I love it. You guys have it already written out. I love it, okay. So what is the parallel structure? Uh, the first part is, it is an excellent source of calcium and or serves as digestive aid and something, okay? So the biggest, the biggest confusion is between A and uh, C because we have and it contains and contains. 
See, the thing is, if it was it contains, then you would also need an it over here. Only then would it be parallel because you would have it is something, it serves something, and then it contains something. And then this is parallel. However, because this does not have um, it, therefore the, the parallel structure starts from here. So it is outside. Yeah, so therefore this is incorrect. It is incorrect, so this is incorrect. Um, containing does not even go with is or serves. Um, it's the wrong tense. So it's not parallel, incorrect tense. This is correct. And again, will contain is not parallel in tense. So it is, it serves, it will contain not parallel in tense. That's the error. Okay, so if you made the mistake, um, oh, can you guys not see annotations? We can't see anything. Um, wow, I've been doing all of this and you guys can't see anything. Let's see. Like the last thing which we can see is the circle around the eight. After that, it just stopped for the last few seconds. Okay. Do you see this? No. Oh, you, uh, I'm sorry, I've been just talking at my iPad. Uh, let's see. Okay, did you guys understand though? No, you guys, um, how do we do this? Give me one minute, let me try something else. Second. Nope. Try again. Okay. Now, do you see? Yeah. Okay. This is this is everything you guys missed when I was talking to my iPad. Um, so the summary is it cannot go, contains is correct, containing makes a tense error, will contain makes a tense error. So the structure is it is, serves, and contains. So remember you want to stack it up. So is, serves, and contains is the same, same tense and same style. So it's, it's correct. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's do the next question. Where is the next question? If it is, we will do nine. So let's do nine, please. Okay. And I will launch the poll. Okay, this should be better. Cool. Okay, and pull. Three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, let's go to this. All right, can you type into chat? Uh, you may not remember this. Can you type into chat what we covered this yesterday? Very quickly. What was this testing? Nice, conjunctions and contradiction. Um, do you remember conjunctions and contradictions? Let me see, do I have this here? No, okay. 
Um, I will show you. I will show you in a, uh, next time. Um, but okay, what this basically is testing is, it's testing um, the, what's the logic between sentence one and sentence two. So also suggest something new. In other words, is a restatement of sentence one. Therefore, is a result of sentence one. Sentence two is a result of sentence one. And for instance, is an example. And so if you read the sentence, Greek yogurt is slightly lower in sugar and carbohydrates than conventional yogurt is. And then it is more concentrated. Greek yogurt contains slightly more protein. So this is talking about lower in sugar and carbs, and this is talking about more protein. So it cannot be in other words, because this is not the restatement. It cannot be therefore. It's not because there's lower sugar that there's more protein. And it cannot be for instance. Uh, more protein is not an example of lower sugar. Also is correct. Um, also is the right logic here. So the conjunction is you want to look at the conjunction, what uh, links the two sentences. Again, please, if you have any questions, please, please, please ask. That's when we learn. If you, if you got one of these answers and you still think that it's one of those after the description, please challenge it. That's where we learn. All right, no challenges. Three, two, one. All right, let's go back. We are now going to do question number 10. Let's do 10. Oh, this is, um, <laughs> okay, read, read the sentence over here, and then I'll show you number 10. Read the sentence. Okay, and then read it here. I'll go back up once more and then we'll come back down once more. I'll go back once more. This is the sentence. And these are the options. One more time. This is the sentence. And this is the answers. Okay. Four, three, two, one. Okay, um, I promised you, I promised you I would show you the, um, the rule from last time. Let's see where it is. Where is it? This was the rule. You remember this rule, friends? This one here? This is where we did it. So if you don't have this written down, take a photo. You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then let's do the question. Here's a question. So um, what, this is, what this is testing is, this is testing just definition. Um, so what, what they're saying is you're supposed to figure out what does this word, what are they trying to say? So because it's more concentrated, Greek yogurt contains more protein per serving, thereby helping people stay something for longer periods of time. So satiated is the correct answer because satiated means uh, full. Um, fulfilled is a trick question because it has the word full but fulfilled is not food wise. You, you can't be fulfilled by food. You are um, usually fulfilled emotionally. So this is a trick answer. So therefore fulfilled is incorrect because this is for emotions. Uh, complacent, this is just the wrong definition. Uh, complacent means, what does complacent mean? Satisfied? Does not mean satisfied, no. Uh, can someone type in the definition of complacent? And then stay sufficient, that's also just, it's the incorrect um, definition. You can't, you can't, be, you can't um, stay sufficient as a, as a hunger state. Your hunger state cannot be sufficient. Complacent is when you're satisfied with your achievements. So 
you stop working. Yep. Um, there's no achievements here. None of this. Okay. Um, someone had a question on here. Who was it? Can you, can you please speak up and, and explain what the question is? Okay, folks, you'll have to speak up and ask me the question, please. Um, in English, it's very difficult to figure out, um, figure it out otherwise. Okay, let's go back here. Let's do 11. Let me start the poll. Ooh, this is a really good one. There are many, many good errors in this one to be identified. If you already got the answers, try and, try and figure out what are the errors in each one. This is a really good question. It tests many different errors. All right, another 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, and four. Okay. All right. Let's start from the bottom. What can you type in the error? What is the error in D? What's the error? Don't just say not not just colon, folks. <laughs> What's, what part of the colon rule are they breaking? No, remember, remember, in the colon, the sentence, sentence before the colon has to be independent. This sentence, this clause is not independent. Guys, you should commit this to memory. You see a colon, you should look for an independent clause, okay? This is not, if you start a sentence with because, uh, this is not an independent clause. So therefore, this cannot be the right answer. This is, the only reason you just cross it out. Oh, you guys again can't see. Can you not see my screen again? All right, let me do this again. Um, here we go. Okay, D makes the error. You guys understood D. Yep. Clause before semi before colon is not independent. Incorrect. Remember this. If you still are getting this wrong, please write it down in your notes. All right, what's the error in C? Please type it out. C, what's the error in C? Yeah, redundancy. It's redundancy because and so are redundant. So you cannot, you don't need both. You don't. Redundancy error. You guys remember that we did this yesterday, right? Okay. And what is the error in A? Can you type out the error in A? Also redundancy. Perfect. Because and therefore, again, I talk about causation. But this is incorrect. Now, what is the what rule is correctly being followed in B? What, is, what rule is correctly being followed here? Tell me a bit more than comma. We have six rules under comma. Comma can be anything. What rule exactly is it following? And it's not, the answer is not comma actually. Okay, I guess you are, comma is correct because it's independent and then dependent, okay. Um, is it? 
So this is, this is independent, right? Farmers and businesses should contain, continue finding, yep. This is, the right side is independent. The left side is dependent. So this is, this is fine. Uh, no one's still gotten it. Nope, keep going. What, what is correctly being done? Correctly being done here. <laughs> Transi no, no transition words either. There's no transition here. You're right, there is no redundancy. All right, friends, this is a modifier. Farmers is being modified. Farmers is being modified by this. Do you agree with that or not really? You don't agree with that? Okay, let's see. Because consumers reap the nutritional benefits of Greek yogurt and support those who make and sell it, farmers and businesses said, okay, fine. Okay, I guess you can disagree. Yeah, okay, fine, fine, fine. Ignore me, sorry. Um, ignore me. You're right, no modifier. All right, let's do the next one. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do convoluted ways. Uh, let's, not 12, let's do 13. Let me start the poll. <laughs> Sorry, friend, I keep forgetting about the poll today. Naman, can you start the poll if I forget? Uh, I can't start the poll. Nihar can. Oh, okay, let me make you co host. Okay, you got it now. Uh, we're doing 13, yep. All right, four, three, two, one, and then. Right, I don't have too many answers, that's okay. Let's go back and let's look at this. And you still can't see this, let me start again. this will help. Okay, what is the error in D? Can you type in the error in D? Yeah, it is, it is redundant. There is no comma. What do we call, what do we call, uh, when there's no comma, what is this type? What is this called? This is called run on, run on, correct. This is a run on sentence. Uh, we need a comma here. And it's also redundant, so redundant, because this evidence follows and shows evidence is repeated. What's the error in C? C, what's the error in C? Yep, so here they fix the comma, but the redundant is still saying, still saying, staying, staying, sorry. Um, B, again, the comma has been fixed, but this thawing follows, thawing, still redundant. And it's uh, wordy, slash awkward. Do we do this? Do we talk about wordy and awkward sentences? Yeah, we talked about wordy error. Yeah, we did wordy error. Remember this one? All right, you don't remember? Let me prove it to you. We did wordy error right here. Wordy error. So when you use less, less words, it's always better. Okay, uh, and therefore the right answer is A. A is correct. Um, it uses a comma. 
to join an independent, independent and dependent sentence. And it's um, brief, it's not worthy. All right, let's keep going. Go on. Nope, not this. Let's do 14. 14, please. All right, five, four, three, two, one, pull. Okay, uh, what type of question is this? Please write into chat. The type of question. Conjunction, there we go. So it's just looking for the relationship. So here we have shows evidence of thawing in late summer right, evidence in late summer. And then here we have earliest date on record. Therefore, actually you're right, the, the correct answer is contradiction, not conjunction, but yeah. Um, we have late summer and then earliest date on record. So therefore these two ideas are opposite to one another. So for example, is not opposite. However, maybe as such is not opposite. Moreover, is also not opposite. So the correct answer is however. All right, I think we have time for one more. Let's do one more. And let's do 15. Right, please use the rules here. Yeah, we've done this already, but um, if you, as you do this, think, I want you to think now we've done all the rules. What's the cause of the other ones being incorrect? What is the reason? All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, um, what's the rule here? Can you please type in the rule? Non-essential phrase, fantastic. Uh, this is a non-essential phrase. And so it should have a comma here and a comma here. And so comma, comma, C is the correct answer. Well done. Okay, uh, let's, do, let's do 16. Every, everything, else, everything else makes the non-essential phrase um, error. There's no comma here. Um, there is no this weird comma here, no comma here. So that's why. And here there's also no comma here. So that's why A is incorrect. Um, they all break the non-essential phrase rule. That's the error. Okay, let's do 16. All right, friends, I want you to get this one right, okay? You, you look at this and I want you to think of the rules that we've talked about. Please don't let me down. Don't let me down here. All right, 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, one. All right, and pull. Okay, um, so let's go here. Wow, all right, friends, many of you got A. Why is it not A? Don't put A, please. A is incorrect because the semicolon rule says the clauses on either side have to be independent. Clauses on either side of the semicolon have to be independent. And um, what is not, this is not independent. You cannot have a clause start with but. So this is incorrect. This is incorrect again because this is not independent. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between C and D? If you chose between C and D, um, right, this is also not independent. Yeah. Uh, if you chose, what's the difference between C and D? There we go. Concision. Being is not necessary. The, the, um, the presence of a colon indicates uh, causation or description or whatever. Yeah. So the being is not necessary. 